Hi, everyone. Hi, James. Uh, this is Beer Thrills Presents Beer Protocol. I'm James. I'm actually drinking lemonade today. It does have a little whiskey in it. I was going to say, I press X to doubt. Uh, this is Jacob. I am drinking a local uh, Virginia cidery, Ditchley Cider Works. Ooh. Um, it is, let me try. Appley. <laughs> It's not incredible. It's actually, hmm, it's interesting. It's all, it's almost more like a sour beer. Really? It's not sweet it's, at all. It's ah, no, it's sweet. It's unfiltered. It's, oh, it's unfiltered. That could be it. I it mean, is, I'm gonna drink it because it's got that kind of pleasant hard cider aftertaste on it. Matt, what you got in that giant mug of yours? In my Viking horn, <laughs> I have Jack and Ginger. Ooh, nice, stellar. All right, done. Clink. I Clink. Clink. So I do want to give a quick shout out because I've had it at almost every restaurant in my local area recently. Uh, Volcano Sauce by Aslan. If you like sweet sours, try Volcano Sauce. It is bright fuchsia. Uh, is this a, a drink? drink? A condiment? A hot sauce? I'll leave that for the viewers. Oh, Aslan please. Brewery. No, no. Please don't have them drink hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> It, it'll be clear in the context you find it in what it is. What do you mean? What is it? Do you know I what? I don't what, know. Do you know what? They uh, mean beer weird shit. Do you do you know also, also is weird shit? Black Your Swan. Hmm. Ah, Matt, take us on a high level tour through Black Swan's entire deal. Okay, she has four physical, four energy, three mystic defenses. She is six health, four threat, size two, and medium move. Uh, she's got a uh, she got strike range two five dice standard uh, builder with a wild push. She has I beam which is energy range three five dice one energy. Uh, target gains incinerate and has wild pierce. Everything dies is range two eight dice four energy. It's got a wild throw uh, for short. She has follow up. So, but basically says she makes an I-beam attack without paying the the cost, and it has to target the original character and ignores range and line of sight. She has charge for two. Uh, she's got Midnight Field. When this character is defending, it may spend any amount of power to use this superpower during the modify opponent's, opponent's dice step of the attack for each power spent. To use the superpower, this character may change one wild in the attack, roll to a blank, and she's got telepathic suggestion for one power. When this character is attacking, it can use this superpower during the modify opponent's dice step of the attack. If it does, it may re-roll one uh, opposing defense die. She's got flight, and she can carry a power gem. And her injured her... side has Same. no significant Nothing. changes. Okay, guys, we need to talk about this character. Holy, Holy shit. God. Um, so that was may have been seen dry, but in my brain, I'm just screaming to myself, this, I feel like, is one of the most aggressively costed for threat characters you've seen in a while. So good. Oh my God, I want this box so bad. So let me point out real quick, 443 defenses with six stamina for four threat. Those are Captain America stats. Yeah. Yeah, that's as good as it gets at four threat for sturdiness. Mm -hmm. So she's already just like, I can take hits. I'll trade hits. I don't care. So her basic strike is um is still nice. It's a good builder. Oh, um, it's a quick. push. Oh, go ahead. What we need to talk about her push and her throw. Her push is limited to size four or less. James, what model in the game is bigger than size four? Dormammu. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. Until Malekith comes out and his giant tiger off an 80s album. Uh, winged giant white tiger thing. Until you. the 80s album incarnated <laughs> as a model comes I, out. Uh, no, it is not just an 80s album. It is heavy metal. It's a heavy metal. Like, I'm surprised <laughs> he's not, I'm surprised he's not like a scantily clad woman just like devil horns the entire way. Wait, yeah. wait for the modding community. <laughs> oh, that, that's you mean also us? what I was going to do. You realize they're just going to take Black Swan's model and put on that tiger and call it a day. <gasps> is it I the mean, same yes. base size? Is this the same base size? <laughs> Pro no, she's not our normal size base. Damn it. Um, 
no, no, no. What I was going to say is that push, being able to push effectively any size other than Dormammu, is huge. Yeah. Um, that's a ton of utility on her basic attack. Because remember, Juggernaut's anti-movement tech is only places and pushes from Mystics. Um, he is still vulnerable to being pushed by physical. His only real defense from that is his big ass butt, which and she does not care about. Builder. <laughs> yes. Uh, telepathic suggestion: her one cost superpower to force an opponent to re-roll a defense die. I saw this pointed out. I will repeat it. Just always use it always. for her builder, because you spend a power, and if you get one more damage, then you just got that power back. Yep. Mm -hmm. At the cost of getting to a little more damage. That's so just all roll those bones. Yeah, I I thought the same thing. I went, oh, it only costs one. Well, why wouldn't I yeah. do it? Because if I even get that one extra power from the builder, yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Um, I beam is a phenomenal attack. Everything dies is massively powerful God for attrition and for damage. Throw for any size means you can throw Dumarmu, which there's not a lot of things that can make that boy move. Yo. Uh, but the fact that it's an eight dice attack with a really good chance of getting a five dice with Pierce attack as a follow up, that's one of the best follow ups in the game. Oh, um, God, Jake, I didn't even. Any multiple attacks. You're yeah, right. And, I didn't and even remember, notice. it's regardless of range and line of yeah. sight after that throw. I now, didn't since... realize that the throw actually doesn't have a size limit. Nope. Uh -huh. I can't uh, wait. Is she basically she... Superman? Uh, I think she is canonically one of the most powerful members of the Black Order, barring uh, Thanos himself, so meh. Uh, she does have flight. No, honestly, her attack profile is great for a four-threat slugger. And like, she's she got has... charge. God, don't forget, charge is only move that attack. It does not restrict you to any given attack. You can absolutely charge an I-beam somebody. You can six dice, you, charge, you can... and everything dies. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you've got six power, yeah. Like, it's a lot of mobility. It's a great offensive kit. It has control built into it. It has great damage. It has incinerate to increase the damage of her team. Mm -hmm. uh, odds are, on most turns, you are not going to open with everything dies. But there's probably a number of turns you could build up to everything dies. Get there in a little bit. Yep. So, the number of times she can... Go ahead. I was say I... Go, uh, no, I'll do my thing in a second. Okay. Sorry. Um, so I think most turns, unless she's specifically trying to set herself up, she may not give herself the benefit of that incinerate special condition, which, again, is incinerate with no dice roll. It's just, you got hit, you're incinerated. Um, I got a rules question fantastic. for you. Yeah. So, Midnight Field. You spend it during the modify opponent's dice stage. Yes. So you're changing yes. wilds two blanks it is modox basic defense ability on a one cost per so show. so does the wild still go off or does no. that happen after modified happen. dice happens before resolution yep so basically so I... you're taking away people's powers yes superpowers yeah, yeah. it's the reason modox is as tanky as he is because it's very difficult to get throws status conditions or displacement effects off onto him because he blinks wilds now you can chew through black swan's ability to do this by just keep attacking her yeah she only yeah. has so much power to spend but on a four threat model even a cost per die basis for modok's defensive ability is strong and she Yo, that is jump. on top of her that is on top of her having four dice for her energy and physical defenses Again, she's great defensively. Telepathic suggestion, giving her essentially Green Goblin's uh, leadership ability mm -hmm. on demand whenever she wants it. Gotcha. Also very important is that telepathic suggestion is not turn limited. Yep. She can use it as many times as she wants during her turn. Only still once per attack. Yeah, once per attack. I'm, make, I'm making sure, time. like, can I just keep spending one? No, yeah. it's once per attack. But you can use it for both Everything Dies and the I-Beam follow-up, which is something Green Goblin's leadership can't, because it's limited yep. once per turn. Uh, flight, again, Charge and Flight gives her a stellar amount of mobility on the field, um, even with a medium move, I, I believe a normal-sized base. Yes. Um, 
All right, so... I want to talk about the Power Gem a little bit. As a four-threat model, I think she's almost immediately in, like, the top three bruisers in the game. Yep. Um, right. As a five-threat model, during the amount of power she has, her attack profiles are good. Her superpowers are honestly maybe better. All right, so as a person who <clears throat> cannot take Power Gems in his list... You get two power. That? That's it? All you do is to get two power? Uh, yeah, you get two power plus your regular... Oh yeah, so yeah, she's yeah. two additional three power. power a turn. Yeah, yeah, so she's just primed up to do charge every single turn. Yeah, charge, uh, free telepathic suggestions, plenty of power for midnight field. It, with the power gem, I think she could very easily open with strike and then do everything dies consistently every activation. All if right, she's already now, in position. Matt... Now remember the balance to this is at least for me, Thanos normally takes it. Yeah, but if you're not playing Thanos and you're just doing yeah. Black Order, but Corvus, but, but if Corvus I make, is your but, leader, dunk on but, Thanos. But but don't forget, in my roster, I have to lay those gems out prior. I can't yes. move them. That's true. So, so if you... I'm just playing a casual game, fuck it, she's getting the power gem. But if I have to lay out a ten man roster, I have to really make decisions. Thanos with a power gem is a lot of fun. Uh and. Honestly, I think Black Swan's also up there for these are one of the characters you want to really consider whether you can spare the threat for to get them their gem. Uh, Corvus with reality is so common that a lot of oh people my. are just like, that's his default. Yes, he will always Black get it. Black Swan, I think, because her stat line is so good innately, and she has an almost any size push and any size throw, this I think she's really splashable. Like that's granted, that's advice I've heard elsewhere, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Is you could put Black Swan in a lot of affiliations. I'm trying and get to get good work yeah, out of her. But the thing is, I'm trying to think of what affiliation because Cabal she's got a lot of she's got a lot of power builds as it is, but having a I beam and then just getting one power for actually doing the I beam, essentially free I beams, free I beams. Um, also for I mean I would take her in Cabal. She's she's yeah, but you're, she you're... does her strike gains power gains power from damage. I'd bring her with the power gem, so she's getting three a turn. So now I can almost do everything dies twice a turn, and still have shit left over to do midnight field or telepathic so suggestion. Would I change um, maybe... out Modok for Black Swan? I'm not sure. So Modok brings a lot of control to the table because he can point and click at somebody and make them move. Um, that ability on its own is probably one of the biggest things Modok brings. In addition to his incredible tankiness, it ju it takes a while to wear Modok down unless yeah. he's getting focus fired. And even then, depending on your dice luck, um, it might still take a while. Mm. Black Swan's biggest problem when splashing her is probably just going to be competition. Yeah, is... it's a four or five point slot, and it's just difficult to figure out where they would fit in in the in other lists like but wakanda you... like eh. I, I think wakanda would dig her like wakanda has kind of the problem of one of their strongest techs being wakanda forever which mm -hmm. you can't use now wakanda can still do a lot of work with their control um but some affiliations are going to want more in roster stuff than others um, I could see her being a valuable target for S.H.I.E.L.D. to pick up, especially with their Ooh, tactic card Shield make her yeah. in affiliation. Um, because, well, Nick Fury is a stellar four-threat model. Um, that affiliation has a lot of three- and four-threat models and a big bruiser slash physical threat on the middle of the table with a four- or five-point Black Swan could be pretty valuable. I would still rather bring with Super Giant in other lists than her. I think she fits really good in, in Black Order, but I think yeah, that it's... in other lists, she's it, it's kind of like the, do you need a four-point murder machine? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say she does a little more than just murder things because Carnage exists if you just need a four point murder machine. Yeah, but Carnage yeah. is not a four four three. Uh, so. Well, that's. I mean, Carnage is very good at making a target dead or dazed. Uh, I think it's her control elements. Yeah. Is she brings a lot of relatively easy to trigger control to the point, uh, to the uh, extract objective. 
that's very, very stellar. It's why Lizard gets taken so much. Lizard's good defensively. Lizard's ability to just kind of have a lot of mobility and just walk up and shove someone off a point um, relatively easily is a big part of his appeal for stuff like uh, Criminal Syndicate and Spider Foes. Uh, so, so she brings some of that to Black Order at a higher cost premium. So All Matt, right. would she fit yeah. into? How is she going to fit into your list? <laughs> She's gonna. She will only get taken if I'm not taking Thanos. Honestly, uh, well, Thanos, oh. it's just Thanos is an eight point model because you're putting two gems on him, so it just really limits what I can bring. But I would still consider at four threat <coughs> on that list. Because Thanos well, can't gotta... be everywhere, so just having another, even at fourth, it's the thing with or without her gem, she still gets most of what she wants. Yeah, she's oh, just yeah. not going to get but, to use but, but still, and midnight I, field as much. If, but if I'm bringing Thanos, I'm also bringing Corvus, and I'm also bringing Proximity of Midnight, and that's eight plus that's sixteen six, threat. Because you're probably bringing right Corvus with reality. Yep. So I mean, if I if I'm bringing Thanos, she's not coming. Um. And generally speaking, I'm bringing Thanos. See, that's uh, my concern. That what you're just saying there is that if you're going to bring a Thanos list, you're she's kind of an extra bit that you're not really sure what to do with. Yeah, but the thing is, is now because I know we discussed it last time that Corvus can be a leader, not as good of a leader, but at least it's you know some free power here and there. Uh, I, I'm not sure I'd say here or there because honestly, well, you only get Vic. Victory points incredibly strong with Thanos. I do feel like Corvus is just going to trigger more often. Oh yeah. So definitely. you're you're probably going to get a lot of extra power off of that, and it can be kind of difficult to overstate how Black Order, how scary Black Order can get with little extra power to hit yeah. their their specters oh. more often. Oh yeah, I mean definitely. So she'll she'll be in my you know my core of Corvus, Proxima, and her, um, and then depending on what it is, splash around. Because Supergiant's cool. I love Supergiant, but Supergiant works better, in my opinion, with Thanos. Cause... This, this is growing mm -hmm. on me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, because she's got the short movement, and you need Thanos' teleports to get her where you want and keep her relevant. So, I, yeah. I, I got the question. Yeah. Uh, are you going to take Black Dwarf anytime soon? Still probably not, because Ebony Maw got upgraded when they changed his card so yeah. now he's now he's good and usable so i'd rather bring him and spend fewer points on someone else who does something similar and just have ebony ball go yeah chuck crap so, here's a question she has one uh black swan has one name tactic card the black onslaught if Black Swan is within range two of an allied Black Dwarf, when she uses her charge superpower, they can each spend one to play the card. After the charge movement is resolved, but before making the attack, you can place Black Dwarf within range one of Black Swan. So she essentially grabs his ass and brings him with her and plops is, him down within range one. Which is really, really cool, but he doesn't get to activate right after it. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's interesting. Black Dwarf having the aggression-based tank where he forces people to redirect attacks to him is potentially, mm -hmm. if if he's within I believe range 2 of the attacker Yeah. Um, that kind of aggressive placement means Black Swan both gets to where she wants to go and she brought a defender slash tank with her. I mean, it's also yeah. good if the, oh shit, I need to take that point. I need two people there like right now. He's already activated. Drag yeah. him along. But there's too many factors to you. You, you kind of have to consider like yeah. you'd be right next I to mean, him, and yeah, it's. Mm. I mean, if I'm making a roster, yes, I'm gonna have all of them because there's five models or yeah. you know six models. So yeah, they're all gonna be there. Seven. I, so or however many, less than ten. There's less than ten okay. of them, so I'm gonna have them. Yeah, um, I, I th it's, this kind of gets the problem of <laughs> the the card is good. In the scenario, you have both Black Swan and Black Dwarf. I just I don't just, think Black Dwarf is necessarily going to be worth yeah. taking in a lot of rosters. 
if I if I really have to go, I mean, it's been so long since I played Black Dwarf. I might be speaking out my ass here. I mean, I Hold still on. think he's good. I think going all in on his massive dice pool attack is a trap because of how often dice pools don't go the way you want. Yeah. But yeah. So for being a four threat tank with built in damage reduction and attack redirection, he does I mean, his job. You just, I mean, you just don't have four threat to spend. Yeah, and it's it's spending three power to throw something size four or less. Why am I doing that when I have another four point model that's going to do it for free, basically? Well, there's well, a lot I mean, of reasons to spend to throw because it's damage uh, outside of your attack action. Oh, true, true, true. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I already have so much. I'm going to murder the hell out of you in every one of my models except uh, Super Giant. Yeah. Except for I, that time, she will randomly just murder someone. I'm yeah. I'm fifty like I said like you said I'm fifty fifty on this like sh like it's kind of like okay cool it's a high point game I got my core yeah it's sure a, throw it's in a, Black Swan if I'm if I'm going against like you know a Black Order list not a Black well actually no a Black Order list or a Brotherhood list or something where I want a tank there to sit back and absorb some shit. Yeah, he'll definitely come, but generally speaking, I'd rather just lean heavy into the I can murder you faster than you can score points. Yeah. Which she helps she does work with that playstyle, and because of her control element, she can help prevent your opponent from scoring points, putting you even further ahead. Like in a lot of cases, Black Order is willing to trade early scoring for aggression. Yeah. And yep. especially since in a lot of cases, um, they will get to activate first. So Every that turn. is one scenario where Black Swan sets up the incinerate, and then because it's the end of the round, she gets to go before anyone else and finishes it off. Yeah. I mean, uh... in general, Black Order getting an in-faction incinerate trigger is kind of scary. Would you use her as an assassin character? I think all of Black Order is assassin yeah. characters. Yeah. Well, I mean, like... So, like, a bunch of them, like, okay, this person attacks this, and then this person bounces off this. Like, as a flanking, taking out, like, uh, Black Cat, or... Uh, I mean, on, uh, honestly, she doesn't have the mobility, I think, even with charge. Uh, honestly, you play a Black Order by punishing your opponent's bad decisions. You placed a quarter of an inch too far. These two characters are going to come in and plow you out. You, okay. you fucked up. Or kidnap you. Or kidnap you, or whatever. So, how would you play her on the field, other than just a beat stick? You, I you, mean, it's that's her calling. That's her life. She she didn't choose this life. The beat stick chose her. Yeah, I mean, um, Black Order plays, you play, you, it's a, you play KG beat stick. You move them up, you get them into place, and you wait for your opponent to get too close, and then you murder it. Yeah. I've right. seen people use Modok really effectively as a flanker because his very high defenses on his healthy side mean it will take your opponent a while and dedicated effort to bring him down, which flanks don't always have mm -hmm. um, because your opponent can't shift all of the resources over in that direction. I think she would, she could probably hold his hide by herself in cool. a lot of yep. cases for those same reasons. I but, think she also would work good in the center. That's yeah. It's very difficult to give like really specific, detailed tactical advice for Black Swan because I think this is just a gender, age like almost generically good, um, yeah. for a threat model. Like she all doesn't of Black have. Order. They all play all spots except for Ebony Maw. Corvus and Proxima. I want to be the middle so they can yank and so they can gank on someone. Um, yes like, and I... no, because you're bringing yeah. uh, the Black Order. Hey, everyone, just drop there. Mm. I, don't know, I just I don't see Corvus on the flanks very often because he needs to be able to get around and deliver punishment wherever he can reach. Final thoughts? Oh, she's uh, coming. She's coming in my list. Like I, I would consider taking her in other affiliations. Like she, again, she's I'll drop, a good floor threat model with some fun abilities. I'll drop her in X Force all day, every day. Hmm. Oh That's God, true. in X Force, the, That's actually not bad. The free rerolls on her attacks to guarantee to help land I, her I, pushes and the follow up in case all else goes wrong. Yeah, I'm always getting it. I'm for the most part, I'm rolling enough dice. Shit, that's actually really good. All right, I'll well, splash her around. 
Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, that is Black Swan. Hooray! All right. Well, we will see you next week. Game off. Game, Game off. off. Bye.